Hey, hey, Nick and Angel here with your weekly dose of Road Trip with Nick, where we talk about life as digital nomads, photography, house sitting, you know, the important stuff. And everything in between. <laughs> That's right. Including gray hair in your beard. Which you can catch at the end of this video, maybe. If you're, yes. if, you, if you stay to the end, you'll be rewarded. Oh, yeah, right. by the way, what do you think? Huh? Oh, yeah. Huh? Peace out, beard. Yeah. Thumbs up if you like it, and uh, I thumbs guess... Thumbs up if you don't like it. If you thumbs down uh, the no, video... Don't no, don't thumbs down it. Don't do that. Check that out. That'd be sad. Today, we are dishing out our four tips for getting a spectacular night sky photo. So, before we get into the top tips that we're going to share with you today, I want to give a quick backstory to how we even kind of started dabbling in the world of night sky photography. One weekend we were camping near Leadville, Colorado, and in the middle of the night I had to pee because that's just life, right? And I'm also afraid of bears. So I don't care if there's black bears, like just let me be. I uh, wear contacts because my prescription's like negative five to five people, maybe even worse than that now. So I can't see. And even with my glasses, you know, whatever, fine. And so I asked Nick like, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pee. Will you come out of the tent? Just, just as long as it's outside of the tent and like just be readily available should I have an emergency sighting of a bear. Hello? Whatever. Somebody had too many stouts at periodic brewing. <laughs> So he is such a good guy that he agrees. Reluctantly, Reluctantly he out of the tent. No, he was he didn't seem that reluctant. He was like, sure, honey, I don't mind doing that for you. Somebody had too many IPAs at periodic brewing. <laughs> we get out of the tent and look up, and the Milky Way has never been... I, we've never seen the Milky Way like that. It was insane. We both just stared in awe. Yeah, we clear could... sky, 10,000 feet uh, away from... All light pollution. light pollution, get out at the right time, you know, probably 1 a.m. And uh, Minish, yeah. it's one of those holy <laughs> moments. It was incredible. Yeah. Fast forward to the next night, we camped in Buena Vista and found a campsite that was overlooking the mountain area. We set up our tent and even set up our tripod in advance and set the alarm for 12.30 a.m. to get up and photograph the night sky. Keep in mind, we had no idea what we were doing. But we just figured we're going to figure out how to do this and we're going to illuminate the inside of the tent as we photograph the Milky Way going across the sky with the mountains in the background. And for this particular shot, we had a little extra gear. We had a, uh, a transceiver to trigger a remote flash and the remote flash had a MagMod uh, diffuser on it. So we just illuminated the entire tent with just one uh, trigger of the flash over the course of, uh, uh, I think, a 25 second exposure. So. This one was a little bit more involved, and we'll link to the gear that we used for this one below. Um, the tips that we're going to give you are more specific to Night Sky without all the, the fancy bells and whistles and lights and triggering and flash and, and you know... That's another video. Yeah, it's another video. And maybe we'll do a behind the scenes more where we actually can show you that process happening. I mean, there was a lot of trial and error that night, but we knew the gist of it. Um, so we kind of just played around until we got the shot we wanted. Tip number one. There is actually a Milky Way season. And this is not about the candy bar. The candy bar season is all year long. <laughs> and not, not recommended. Yeah. And all not, year long. Not recommended. <laughs> but the Milky Way season we're referring to goes from roughly March until October, with the peak season being more in the April to July time frame. Those are your best opportunities to capture the most spectacular Milky Way. Tip number two is check your local area for the moonrise and moonset times. Waning crescent moons, new moons, and waxing crescent moons all offer opportunities to get outside and photograph the night sky in all its glory with no moon. Tip number three is to keep an eye on the forecast. You want to go out uh, on a clear night with no clouds, and this is often the most challenging part. Um, you may need to go uh, several days in order to get that perfect um, perfect clear night sky. However, don't be entirely deterred by a few clouds in the sky. Um, sometimes they can be illuminated by nearby light and create some interesting effects, and a lot of that is sort of trial and error. The fourth and final tip is all about the gear. The three most important things are having a camera with manual settings 
a lens with the manual focus option, and a sturdy tripod. As our starting point, we set our camera to 3200 ISO, f2.8, and uh, usually a 20 second exposure. And then we'll adjust from there, trying to balance ISO and shutter speed. As you approach 30 seconds, you might be able to pull out some more color from a Milky Way. However, you may also start to see just a slight indication of star trails, which almost kind of results in them looking out of focus. So less than 30 seconds is usually the sweet spot and um, kind of finding, finding the right balance of ISO is, is just sort of a trial and error process. You'll also want to make sure you turn off uh, image stabilization or vibration reduction if your lens has that. If your lens is on a sturdy tripod, you actually don't need this stabilization and in some cases it can actually cause some shake and blur if it's enabled. So make sure you disable that. Save yourself the headache. Save yourself the headache. <laughs> when you look through your viewfinder to set up the shot, you're not going to see anything. It's going to be black. It's pretty much like closing your eyes and looking through your viewfinder. That's, that's it. You're not, no, pitch black. So that's where the manual focusing comes into play. And the trick that we learned, thanks to our friend Chris Burkard, again, we were mentioned him in another video, I'll link to it up here because he's awesome, hello, is that you want to pull your lens all the way to the infinity symbol, which kind of looks like that. Little... Like an infinity symbol. Yeah, like an infinity symbol, thanks, yeah, who knew? <laughs> it's a sideways eight, and you're going to turn it all the way, which literally your camera won't go anywhere, any farther past the infinity, so you'll know when you get to the far edge of it, and you want to just dial it back a tiny bit and then take the shot with the settings we just mentioned and marvel at your first night sky photo after 20 seconds elapses which feels like an eternity when you're so excited to see the work you're producing. And one of the reasons when you look through the viewfinder all you see is pitch black is because your eyes take so long to adjust and so keep this in mind. Um, Cell phones, flashlights, regular headlamps, usually best to avoid those. It takes your eyes a long time to adjust. Even the preview image that your camera shows will affect your adjustment to the night sky. So um, there's no getting around it, but keep in mind, uh, eliminate white light as much as possible. Pro tip is get a headlamp that uh, has a red light enabled feature. That is what we use when we're doing night sky since it doesn't have the same effect on your eyes as white light does. Going back to the manual focus piece and coming backing off just a bit from infinity, it takes a few tries. Our recommendation is come back from infinity just a little bit, take a shot, go a little bit farther, take a shot. I'm talking tiny bits of, of, just of change between the two. Take another one and then review those three. As you're flipping through those three photos on the preview on the back of your camera, you can see the subtle differences in the sharpness and it's a great way to really dial in on that sharpness as you're taking photos. So bottom line, you won't be able to autofocus on the star. So you'll have to adjust manually and keep in mind that you can't just zoom in on the stars and your um, LCD preview because that's just a digital zoom. So it may not give you an accurate representation of how sharp it is. So you really have to kind of just get a feel for comparing the, ca the shots you've taken and assess uh, whether you feel like they're sharp or not. Manual focusing is hard. Kudos to Ansel Adams and all those other amazing photographers out there that did this all the time. Although I will say stars are way different than manual focusing on mountains, but that's, it doesn't matter. The point is, is it'll make you a better photographer. So to recap, number one, tripod is a must. If there's one thing you take away from this, it's that you simply cannot capture the night sky without a tripod. Number two is make sure you are in Milky Way season if that's what you would like to capture. Number three, make sure you have a dark and clear sky. Know when your moon rise and set times are and know your forecast. And last but not least, get your camera settings dialed in and your lens manual focus dialed in as well. These are your best friends in terms of capturing that oh so perfect night sky image that you've drooled over I know we have in the past. We'll link to the important camera gear that we mentioned in the description below. If you have any other tips or tricks that you want to include on this, please leave them in the comments. We'd love to 
community source the information and share it with others. We definitely are not perfect in this and we are not experts. This is just the information we know and that we've tried and used over the last couple years. As always, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps YouTube know that you like the things we're saying and the content we're putting out. And it also helps us know too that you like it. Have a great day. What happened? Surprise! <laughs> He's like, he just lost 20 years by the shaving of his beard. Yeah, it was time. And especially last um, last week's video, if you don't if you didn't watch it yet, I'll link to it right up here. But um, when the cover art, he's like putting his chin out, and it's what it looked like. You know how like lions like shake out their mane or something, but his whole beard was like it looked like his like jaw was gigantic. So yeah. it was a lot bigger than it looked when I you know groomed it and like waxed it and like combed it. Cause like if I didn't do that, it was kind of like all scraggly and like it's out of control. Also. I hate to take, tell you this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. And here, viewers, you get this too. The grays didn't respond to the wax very well, so they'd be like, whirr, all here, <laughs> while the other stuff's all calmed down. So you kind of had a... Um, you could go heavy on the wax. Yeah, it was just like, you know... Or embrace the... Tame, tame the beast or shave it off. And so we said, there's always tomorrow for dreams to come true. <laughs> That's right. Until next Christmas season. Or, you know, like next week. Somebody asked, how long have you been growing that? And he was like, ah, uh, you know, like a week. <laughs>